Redemptive leadership also entails systems. Systems and, and structures and policies and processes and all that stuff that we often uh, either dive too deeply into or want to ignore altogether. The reality is, is redemptive leadership asks us to pay careful attention to them. When God gave us dominion over the earth, He wanted us to help it flourish, not just keep it from growing thorns. What God has commanded us to do when we lead is to tend a garden in such a way, tend an organization in such a way, tend a, a family in such a way, is that the best of what God has put in people grows. And what if we had systems and structures and policies and procedures that did that? Rather than keeping us from evil, inspiring us towards what God has commanded. I think if we had tons and tons and tons of organizations and families like this, we might just see the movement of God that turns the world upside down on its head. Systems and structures, they're not the enemy, nor are they the answer. But what they can be is, a, is, is like a great garden that, that brings in the best of the tools to be able to put together a, a place where things can grow and flourish and produce fruit. What if we started thinking about them out that way? What if we started thinking about everything that we put in place in our organization is a way in which we can enable people to live out the image of God, to be able to perform well in His likeness, and be able to grow in their ruling of the earth as a vice regent for God? Wouldn't that be amazing? If systems and structures can do that, well, according to scriptures, and what I see through, through the scripture, whether it's Moses talking to his father-in-law, or we see the way that God separates the disciples into a group of 70 and sends them out and gives them some boundaries. We see God doing something. He's building structures, not so that things can get done, but so that the people can flourish according to the plan of God and the mission of God.